Good morning and welcome to our worship on this Easter Sunday morning. Usually we gather in church to celebrate the resurrection of Christ from the dead, but due to the current situation in the world, we're prevented from doing that this morning. But nevertheless, we still have reason for joy because we can still gather as a church family through social media as we celebrate God's gift to us this morning, as we celebrate the good news that Christ is risen. Please do join with us this morning in the responses during our service. Uh, the words will be on the screen and also with the singing of our hymns. And so we turn to our order of service. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And let us pray. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we gather in worship as we sing that wonderful Easter hymn, See What a Morning. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. 
We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together our prayer for today. Living God, living God, for our redemption you gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross. And by his glorious resurrection, you have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily unto sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our readings this morning will be read by Aaron and Trevor. And afterwards, Gillian is doing our children's talk this morning. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and he came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they quickly departed from the tomb and fear and great joy. And ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up to him hold, hold, to hold his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. Preaching to Cornelius' household. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word which you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree, whom God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witnessed that through his name whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning everybody, happy Easter. Who else was up at six o'clock this morning to do the dawn? We were like idiots. Anyway, I just want to tell you about one of the games we've been playing a lot in this house. 
um, since all of this isolation stuff has started. As some of you may know, Gary's not really allowed to sit in the room with us, so we have to play a lot of games on the phone. And um, we have been playing a lot of hide and seek. Now, the joy of hide and seek, as you all know, is that somebody goes and hides and somebody else has to be the counter. And they'll count to 10 or even 100 if they're feeling particularly bored and uh, then they have to come and find you. Well, Gary is so good at hiding in plain sight that the kids that we have been speaking to lately can't even find them, so it's really quite funny. But there we go. So in our huge game of hide and seek, it's always wonderful when you go looking for your little one and they are giggling their wee heads off and um, you find them too easily. Well today, Jesus is looking for us. In our gospel story from John, we hear of a huge game of hide and seek. When Mary and the disciples went to the tomb and found the tomb was empty. They had many emotions, they were mixed emotions, they were sad, they were frightened and they really didn't know what was going on. But the joy of the gospel story today is to be found in the first few words that Jesus said. He said to Mary, woman, why are you weeping? And I find that to be very significant. That first of all, Jesus is looking for us. He wants us to come find him. He wants us to seek him out. Some of us want to and some of us don't. Some of us get bored playing the game. Some of us jump out too soon. But in our gospel reading today, Mary didn't recognise the gardener until Jesus spoke and said, Mary, why are you weeping? And today Jesus says he understands why we are weeping. He understands why we are sad. He understands why we're very confused by the world. But we are to stop weeping because he comes with hope and he comes with joy because the ground couldn't hold him. He went to the grave for us, but he rose victorious. And that is a lot to celebrate. So today I'm gonna to do you a wee experiment just to show. And I hope it works. I have a glass bowl, but nobody was daring enough to let me put this over their head, a bit like Gary did the other week. I have a bag full of water, all right, if I opened it, you would see that it is warm. And what I want you to think about is that this is our body with Jesus. The world is horrible to us. The world is lonely and we're a bit scared. And we say, Lord, I need help. But look, I've pierced the bag and not a drop of water has come out. Not a drop. Do you believe me? Look. None's coming out. Let me try it again. I'm bored. I'm fed up. I'm fed up with only seeing my mommy and daddy and my brothers and sisters. I want to see my friends. Look, no water escaped. No water escaped because Jesus is with us. People we know are sick and we're worried. But look, we don't need to fear because the water is contained. I think this is amazing. Try it out for yourself at home and see if you can do the same. Not one of my pencils leaked. Not one, my bag is still intact. It's brilliant. But you know, boys and girls, Jesus wants a relationship with us today. He wants to be found by us today. He wants us to have hope and he wants us to know his love. All he says is ask and he will be found. He says stop crying because he is with us and he offers us peace, he offers us life, and he offers us the help to get through these really weird days and to know him better. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for loving us so much that you chose to give up the richest of heaven to come here on earth with us. And Lord, we thank you that you died on the cross for us 
but even more so that you rose to life again so that we do not need to fear, we don't need to be lonely, we don't need to be scared because we know that you're with us. So Father God, we ask you today to be our friend, to walk with us daily. Amen. Our children's hymn this morning is This Is Amazing Grace. Let's worship together. let us pray. And God our Father on this Easter Sunday as we rejoice in the good news that Christ is risen, 
Help us to see what that means for us today and how we too can live with that resurrection hope. For we ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well it's hard to believe that it's Easter Day already. It only seems like yesterday we were packing away the Christmas tree and all the decorations with it. When we were doing that, as we looked forward to the new year, none of us could foresee what the new year would bring, never mind that sense of hopelessness, fear and loss that a small molecule such as the coronavirus would bring to the world. Easter 2020 is one that we're going to remember for many years. It was the year the church was closed. It was the year the Easter egg hunts were cancelled. The year that family reunions were put on hold. And a year when Easter walks were confined to the back garden. It was the year we stayed at home, watching church, joining in on our telephones, our iPads and our televisions. And yet, despite the worst of our fears, despite the uncertainty that we all face, we proclaim that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and we trust in him to be our help and our strength in the coming days and months. As I was preparing for this morning, I felt the Holy Spirit prompting me to turn to the Psalms, and in particular to Psalm 23. And I was having this debate with the Lord, that's not what I want to preach. And the more I debated, the more I felt the Lord guiding me to these words this morning. And I want to share them with you. They're words that we know well, words of comfort and words of hope. And so David wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness even for his own name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for evermore. And as I read those words, I was asking the Lord, what in particular is it you want us to hear this morning? What is it you're saying to us through these verses? And verse 4 almost jumped out of the page. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. And I was thinking, well, it's Easter day. What does that have to say to us this morning? What reassurance is that giving us? And then it suddenly hit me. Because there in the centre of that psalm is our Easter hope. We live in a world that's very dark at the moment. A world that's full of shadows. And a world that's full of uncertainty. In all of our homes behind our closed doors. We're all going through the same worries. We all have the same anxieties. And we're all facing 
the future together. Gillian worries by the end of this lockdown that I'm going to have lost the plot. And then our children remind her, but mum, dad has already lost the plot. Wherever you are this morning, whether you're in the kitchen or the living room, or in the bedroom, or even at the dining room table, I want us to hear the Easter hope that we have in these words that David wrote all those years ago. I want us to journey back this morning to that first Good Friday when Jesus experienced similar emotions that we are going through during this time of uncertainty during this pandemic. Good Friday must have been a very dark day for Jesus when his friends betrayed him, when they denied knowing him, when they ran away and left him friendless. When he was isolated, when he felt alone, apart from those who hated him, those who came to strip him, those who whipped him till his flesh was raw, those who pressed the crown of thorns on his head until the blood ran down his face, those who spat on him, those who mocked him. When you think about it, it must have been a very dark and lonely place to be. That lonely journey as he walked along the road to Calvary. That loneliness and that isolation that he felt hanging on the cross. And yet today we celebrate one of the most amazing events in the whole of history. The empty tomb. Jesus is risen, we proclaimed at the start of our service. Hallelujah. He overcame death and he gives us hope. From that place of despair, we find hope and new beginnings. And this morning we are all going through uncertainty. There is this darkness around us. That darkness, that sense of isolation and loneliness can seem unbearable. But in all of those feelings and all of those things that we are experiencing, remember one thing this morning. That because Jesus rose again, there is hope. Because Jesus rose again, we know that those days are not going to last. There is hope and the power that raised Christ from the dead is available to us this morning. Because nothing is impossible for our God. And that's what Paul writes to the church in Ephesians in chapter 3 and verses 20 and 21. He says that God is able to do abundantly more than either we think or imagine. When Jesus died on Good Friday, the authorities, the religious leaders, they did everything in their power to make sure that he was dead. And even when he was on the cross and taken his last breath, they pierced his side to ensure that he was done away with. When they knew for certain that Jesus was dead, they placed him in a tomb and they rolled this amazing heavy stone in front of it. And then they placed soldiers in front to guard it. The Roman officers, the Jewish leaders, were making sure that no one could get in and no one could get out. Jesus had been done away with. Can you imagine the surprise? 
Can you imagine the shock, the horror on their faces that first Easter Sunday morning when they discovered that the stone had been rolled away and that the tomb was empty? In fact, when they realised that Jesus had risen just as he said he would. You see, nothing was impossible for God that day. And nothing is impossible for our God today. This morning, you may feel isolated. You may feel that your problems are overwhelming you. But remember, nothing is impossible for God. That is our Easter hope. Jesus does say to us in John 16 and verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in the world. We will go through difficult times. There will be dark days. But listen to what Jesus says. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. For nothing is impossible for our God. And anything you are going through this morning. Remember that Paul writes in Romans 8. We know that in all things. God works together for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. You know, when the disciples looked at the events of that first Easter, those days leading up to the crucifixion and the death of Jesus, it didn't make sense. And you know, we look at those in hindsight and they still don't make sense. And yet Isaiah reminds us, he was pierced because of our transgressions. He was crushed because of our iniquities. The punishment that was laid upon him was for our peace. And we are healed by his wounds. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each one has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We realise that Jesus went through all of that for us. He endured the cross. He endured the pain and the suffering to give us hope and a future. And it may well be this morning that God wants you to know that he is able to carry you through. For the dark days will come to an end and better days will follow. When I read these words, even though... I walk through the darkest valley. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It reminds me that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living, just because he lives. And Jesus says in John 14 and verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And so our Easter hope this morning. Is that he goes before us. And he goes with us. He walks through those dark days. Through this time of uncertainty and better days are to follow. And Jesus says, trust in God, trust also in me. Let us pray. And God our Father, we thank you.
for that Easter hope that even in the darkness we can cling to the light of Christ. In our weakness we can know his strength and in our doubt his power is incredibly more than any of us think or imagine. So Lord abide with us and enable us to go through this in the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue in worship once more as we sing the hymn, Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Let's worship.
Let's declare our faith this morning in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the disciples. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. And let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, risen from death, we praise you for changed lives, a new hope this Easter. Lord, you came to Mary in the garden and turned her tears into joy. Be near those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Remind them that you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, you came to the disciples in the upper room and turned their fear into courage. Be near those who are living in fear, those who feel isolated and those who are struggling. Remind them that you never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, you came to the disciples by the lakeside and turned their failure into faith. Be near those who are tired of feeling a failure. Remind them that your strength is sufficient and that they can lean upon you. Lord, you came to the disciples on the road to Emmaus and turned their despair into hope. Be near all who live with despair because of their circumstances or the events in the world today. Remind them that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, you come to us in our brokenness and our shame, and you turn our weakness into triumph. Be near all who are weary and heavy burdened. Remind them that in rest and return will be their strength and their salvation. Lord, on this Easter day, we give you thanks for your abiding love and mercy. And we unite together as the church family in our own homes as we pray for God's kingdom to come and his will be done. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And as we draw our Easter service to a close, we're going to join together in that wonderful Easter hymn, Thine be the glory, risen. I can't remember the words. Son. <laughs> Thine be the glory, risen, conquering son. That's why you should always have your prompt in front of you. Let's worship together as we praise God.
we do thank God on this Easter Sunday that he gave Jesus as his risen, conquering son. Could I thank those who have helped with our worship today? To Aaron and Trevor for reading. Uh, for Timothy, Hannah and Melissa for leading us in our worship. And to Gillian for leading us in our children's talk. Could I say from all of us in the Miller House, a very happy and peaceful Easter to each and every one of you. And may God fill your homes with his peace this Easter. We draw our service to a close as we use the words of response on the screen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light in the world. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we hold on to that hope this morning that our Saviour, Jesus Christ, has risen from the dead. And no matter what the future holds, even when we go through those darkest valleys, we can be assured that he is with us. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And so let us bless one another as we share together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.